Hello, Michael here again with another Render Man tutorial. This week we're going to be talking about linear workflow, which is a tutorial that I've been avoiding because it's very hard to explain. So I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of it. Uh, I'm just going to briefly touch on what's happening and then how you can achieve a linear workflow in Maya. So um, this uh, little uh, image is off the Render Man website. And I'm just going to explain what it means really quickly. So when you've got an image uh, that is being displayed on your computer, that's a JPEG for instance, um, when that image is created, um, it has a curve applied to it so the image will display correctly. If there's no curve applied to it, um, all the gamma gets jacked up and it'll appear uh, washed out or it'll appear too dark. Um, I think generally it, it appears too dark if it doesn't have the um, if it doesn't have the gamma applied to it, which is done automatically with a JPEG. Um, so uh, inversely, when you're rendering, uh, say with a RenderMan light, it has a linear curve. So if this one here on the left is your uh, texture and then this calculation here for your light in the center is linear, it's applying this linear curve to this, um, this curve here which is going to cause the colors to come out incorrectly. So you want to have a linear um, input having a linear curve applied to it, like the light have a linear curve applied to it. So then your viewing space um, has, the correct, um, has the correct curve applied to it so it doesn't look overly saturated or uh, underexposed or overexposed. Um, so that is a little bit confusing, but hopefully you'll understand by the end of this tutorial um, what that means exactly. All right, so in Maya here, I've got a um, couple of balls um, and they've just got the Pixar Disney shader applied to them. Um, and I'll show you here in the hyper shader to what's going on. So um, the ball on the left, I've actually just colored with uh, the swatch um, color. Uh, in Maya and then the one on the right I've applied a texture and they've both got the same um, RSH, uh, RGB color um, applied to them and for your reference that RGB color is 99214 and 132. Um, now in your render settings if you click that button there at the top you've got uh, features in RenderMan RIS. Um, it's wise to have linearized colors disabled, otherwise um, it's going to apply an inverse curve to your uh, Maya colors. If you're using 2016, um, this, this feature is probably less useful. If you're using 2014 and 15, I think, from in Maya, um, you may want to have that applied because they don't have this option here, um, which I'll show you. So you see you've got mixing color spaces, display space. Um, so I wanted to, you can see that it says RGB from zero to 255. Linear color is uh, from zero to 255 um, in range. So um, if I had it set to zero to one, you can see it's got these values. And I'll show you the image in Photoshop. So if I grab the color picker, you'll see that the RGB value is 99, 2, and 4, and 1, 3, 2. And if we go back to Maya, and have it set to RGB zero to one, none of those numbers make sense. So if we go at RGB zero to 255, um, that's correct. And the mixing space is also important. If I've got it set to rendering space, once again, those numbers are gonna be incorrect if I type those in from Photoshop. So I wanna use display space because um, what's being displayed in Photoshop is what we're using to select our colors. So, um, that's a new feature, I think, for 2016 from memory. So uh, you would want to have linearized colors enabled f uh, if you aren't using 2016 and you aren't using this. Also, with our um, textured ball, uh, so we've got a swatch ball here on the left and our color, uh, our texture, um, which is being applied to JPEG uh, on the right. Uh, in our file node, we want to make sure our color space is set to sRGB. Uh, if you were using, say, an EXR image um, or a 32-bit TIFF, you'd want to set it to RAW because they don't already have a gamma curve applied to them. They have a 32-bit um, color space, so that's uh, 0 to 255. 
which doesn't require a gamma uh, correction applied to it. And just for your reference, uh, also here is the um, Photoshop uh, image just on the left here. And then you can see the two shader balls with the same color applied to them. Uh, so you can see that I'm using the same color across um, all three um, variables. So far as color management settings go, um, you'll want to go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Preferences, Color Management, uh, Rendering Space set to Scene Linear, Rec 709 slash sRGB, View Transform set to sRGB um, because we're viewing this, uh, our view space is sRGB. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. So if I just click uh, IPR, you'll see that both of our balls, um, in spite of one having a, a JPEG applied to it and the other one having the Maya color applied to it, um, they're both the same color. Also, while you're in the um, It viewer, you wanna to go to uh, View, go to image color space and make sure it's set to linear um, and then your display view should be set to sRGB. If you're exporting this um, and going file export file if you've got it set to open EXR it's going to um, it's going to export using this color mode so what you see is what you get. If you're exporting as a uh, JPEG or a PNG you're going to want to go to catalog burn and mapping on save otherwise you're going to get uh, an incorrectly color managed image, um, which is obviously no use to anyone. If I didn't do this correctly, this is the result you may have been getting. So as you can see, uh, with the in, uh, incorrect um, values applied, we've got our, our Maya swatch color on the left here, which isn't, if you look at the um, display space here, I'll just get that in the image. Um, you'll see that it's a lot more uh, sort of dark um, and then our image color space is um, more blown out. So um, obviously, like I said, the workflow at the top of the, um, at the top of this tutorial is the correct way to do this. So you get um, a correct gamma curve applied, whether it be to a um, JPEG or a swatch. Um, and I believe in 2014 and 2015, you may have had to, you may have to uh, apply a 2.2 gamma um, correction to your um, my color picked nodes. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head and I don't have 2014 or 15 installed on my computer anymore. So I can't show that unfortunately. But um, if that's the, if you're getting sort of one of these results, um, I recommend adding that node to your um to your color swatch in the hypershade editor um but yeah that's that's really all there is to it um, i wanted to keep this simple and straightforward as possible um, because i know it can get overly confusing um, and i'm more than likely to make a mistake uh, in what i'm saying the longer i talk about it so hopefully that's helped you out um, let me know if i did make any mistakes here uh, it's super confusing topic and it is very easy just to make an a minor error slip of the tongue. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully this has helped you. If it has, make sure you click like so other people can find it. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure uh, you're subscribed for more Render Man tutorials and more just general 3D tutorials coming at you every week in the future.